Good morning, FlossTube. Um, my name is Deb or Debra, Science Knitster on Ravelry, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, it is May 31st. I don't know where the month went. It's gone fast. Um, this is a, um, a podcast about um, stitching and knitting. Uh, today is pretty much all stitching and purchases and stuff like that. I um, hope you enjoy it. Thank you uh, for those of you that have come back and subscribed. Um, when I started this so about a month ago, um, <clears throat> I wasn't sure um, if anybody would be interested, frankly, and um, or if I would keep doing these. Um, I do mean to do them on a weekly basis, but uh, I teach at the local community college and also chair my department and the end of the semester just got a little too much for me. And so last Saturday, I wasn't ready. And um, and then Saturday night, my AC went out. So I was like, and then somebody had to come and fix it. Fortunately, they um, <clears throat> my apartment complex, they have maintenance available for stuff like that on the weekends. Some of the guys live on the property. And so, um, they did fix it on Sunday, but but by then I was doing other things, and um, <clears throat> and then I thought, oh, I'll I'll tape on Monday, I'll record on Monday, and then, you know, I was too busy stitching, and then I had some work to catch up on, so didn't happen, um, and I had planned to do yesterday, but um, again, I wasn't ready, and I wasn't all that happy with the last my last episode, um, episode three, this is episode four. Um, I wasn't real happy with that one. I was kind of all over the place because I hadn't gotten much sleep that week. So I slept in this morning um, and I'm more rested. I'm, I hope more organized and um, we'll see how it goes. So <clears throat> it's the end of mania. And um, if you've been following my videos, you know that I've been doing Mermania. Uh, I got the idea from Stitching with Reese. Um, I, I enjoy her floss tubes also, so if you haven't checked her out, um, check her out. And um, so all of my starts are have mermaids in them. Either the mermaid is the main thing or there's a mermaid in there somewhere. Um, anyway, so um, first I want to show you my progress from week three which would have started, let's see, I started this one. Sorry, I should have checked the dates before I came on. I did not. Okay, so I would have started this one on the 22nd of May. Um, and I did show some progress in my last video. Actually, I'm sorry, no, I started this one on the 15th of May. And I did show some progress on this one in my last video, but I hadn't made very much progress. My goal, was to get the mermaid stitched and I was able to do that. So first let me show you what the pattern is. It is Under the Sea by Bright Needle. Okay, um, I really love Bright Needle and as I've said before, for those of you that are watching yet another one of my videos, thank you. Um, I, uh, I really love their style, but unfortunately they are not designing anymore. So, um, I started this one in the middle. Sometimes I start in the middle. Sometimes I start on the edge. It just kind of depends on how I'm feeling. This one I started in the middle so I could get to the mermaid. Um, let me put something behind this. So I could get to the... No, that's not going to work either. Um, need something that's just white. Ah, here we go. Um, get... I just wanted to get down to the mermaid and get the mermaid stitch. I don't know if you can tell, but there's some Krynic blending filament in her tail. So that gives it a little bit of a sheen. I'm not sure that's coming through. I don't think that's coming through. Um, I think it does come through on my pictures that I posted on Instagram. So you might check it out there. So that's all, all the farther I got. Um, this is, I'm using all the called for threads, but the called for linen Americana blend by r, &R Productions, I couldn't find. So this is, um, I think it's a Zweigert, it's called Sea Lily. So, 
So that was from a couple weeks ago. And then on May 22nd, I started my next one, which is Shores of Hawk Run Hollow. And um, so there's the mermaid. And um, I think I've had this chart since it came out. I had the chart and the linen <laughs> since it came out. Um, and finally started, I am almost embarrassed to show this. So first I'm just gonna show you that I'm using the called for linen. Um, it is, I think it's autumn, vintage autumn gold, vintage autumn gold by Lakeside Linens. And I'm using the called for DMCs because I really don't have a silk collection and given all the money I'm already spending on cross stitch, like pretty much all the money I used to spend at Starbucks, I'm spending on cross stitch now. Um, sorry, Starbucks. Uh, hope you're not going out of business because I'm not there every day anymore. Anyway, so um, I'm using the DMC. I did have to buy a lot of them also, but they're much less expensive. So um, what I decided to do was to work the outline of the blocks to get over to that block with the mermaid in it. And um, this is over a week's worth of work because I haven't worked on this very much. Um, but you can see I did get down. So I'm, I'm down to about where the mermaid is now. So um, I will keep stitching on this. Actually, I'm gonna keep stitching on all the projects I started in Mermania and um, I will I will make progress on them. However, um, the last couple weeks I've been distracted by other things so I haven't I haven't worked on my Mermania projects as much as I did the first two weeks. Excuse me, sorry for the slurp. Um, and so the um, one of the things that distracted me, was work. Um, it was the end of the semester, so there there was a lot to do. As I mentioned, I'm department chair, so I had to you know, make sure all our assessments were in properly, check the data, because I'm gonna have to do a report. Um, fortunately, that's not due for a while yet. And, um, and then, um, you know, help, especially the adjuncts, um, especially the new ones, make sure they know what to do and and then it was just follow up at the end of the semester and then get ready for summer. Summer summer session comes fast. I don't normally teach in the summer because I'm usually traveling, going to workshops and conferences, but none this summer. So, um, and we, we are for the first time offering our majors biology courses in the summer, um, at least the first time since I've been here. So, um, and the person who is gonna teach them um, decided he, he had other things um, that he had to do. So it's like, well, I don't really wanna give these to an adjunct the first time we're teaching them in summer. So um, I decided to teach them myself. So I'm teaching both summer sessions, which I have never done. We'll see how that goes. Um, but I also have chair duties this summer. Not, we don't normally do, but um, because of COVID, they, um, they asked us and they're paying us, which I'm very happy about to do some, to carry on with our chair duties. And we have some that are tied to COVID related things, um, such as mentoring the faculty and so forth that we, well, I usually do in the summer anyway, but I'm happy to be getting paid for it this summer. Okay, so what else was I distracted by? This gal here was a big distraction. Mary Eliza McMillan, 1869. Um, I'm just loving this sampler. Um, and so I did, instead of working on Under the Sea and Hawk Run Hollow, I was working on Mary Eliza. So here is my progress. I've actually made quite a bit of progress considering um, I had minimal stitching time. So I'm stitching this on 28 count Legacy um, because that's what I had in my stash and, and when I downloaded, this is one of the little gems. I'm, just, I'm sorry, I didn't say. This is one of the little gems from um, Hands Across the Sea. So it's a PDF download. I love these because I can have them instantaneously and not have to wait. Um, anyway, um, so it's one of the little gems. And when I saw this one, um, 
because I've been purchasing the little gems, but like, I need to start it. And I had most of the DMCs, but I didn't have any fine, you know, finer count linen, 40, 36, or even 32 that I wanted to use. But I had this beautiful piece of Picture This Plus Legacy. Um, and so I decided I would stitch it on that. Okay, I've already said this, but for those of you that are new, yes, I know I have like no margin. It's okay. I'm going to make a quilted wall hanging out of it. And I have enough for a seam and a teeny tiny edge. I'm fine with that. So, um, so when I think last time I was just down here, I had done some of the border, like mainly this part of the border. And then um, about, I was about halfway through the strawberries. And um, so I finished the strawberries and I was like, oh, I wanna get down to that house. So that if I have meetings where like I have to be there, but I don't have to, um, I, I'm not leading the meeting or I don't have to um, be like engaged every single second. Um, I can I can sit there and stitch. I can even like block my picture and sit there and stitch. Um, <laughs> so um, I haven't actually done that because most of the meetings I've been in, I've been running or, or I'm heavily engaged in. So, um, but anyway, so I got down to the house, I did the house, and then I got up here and did some more of the border. And then last night, um, or yesterday, sometime yesterday, I think it was last night, I started working on um, these um, letters just for, just to start getting something else up there. So I'm really enjoying this one. Um, I do wish I could have had it on a higher count so I could work with one strand. I'm I'm really enjoying that on the higher counts of linen and it's spoiling me um, because I'm one of those that like, I feel like I need to lay my threads. I'm not on this one because I've started using the sewing method, but um, sometimes it slows me down because I the threads twist and I have to go fix them. I just do. Um, okay. What else has been distracting me? Let's see, make sure I have these in the order I want them in. Yes, I do. Actually, put that there. Okay, so last weekend, we had the 25th of May. This was what, Saturday? It's all running together. Um, so on the 25th of any month, of course, you must stitch something Christmas related, right? Yes. So um, I started, excuse me, Mary Manatees by Lindy Stitches oh, back in April sometime. Um, so uh, I bought this as a PDF. And um, so I decided, although usually I stitch on an ornament on the 25th, I have a cup. well, I have one in particular that I've been stitching on. From Little House Needleworks, but um, I decided I wanted to make some progress on this one, so so I took it out and I've been I did a little work on this one. Um, I'm stitching this one on Picture This Plus. Um, it's 28 count. And I forgot to say my samplers. No, I did say it was on 28 count. So this is on 28 count Ariel. It calls for sterling, but um, I didn't have sterling. I had, and so I looked through what I had. Um, basically, I have a little stash of Picture This Plus on 28 count from about um, at least four or five years ago, maybe longer, <laughs> um, when I was in the club one year. And I was in the club because it was Susan's fault. For those of you that are back, um, you know, I've mentioned my, my very good friend, Susan, who um, we enable each other a lot. But anyway... Um, it's all her fault. I was in the picture this plus. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, it. I so I have this little stash of 28 count linen because that was before strong cheaters became available everywhere or easily available, and uh, my eyes were getting to the point where 28 was the the um, smallest linen I could work on comfortably without tons of magnification. So, um, which made me sad. But now, thanks to all the cheaters out there, 
4X, 5X, 6X. I even saw 7X. I might have to get some of those. <laughs> um, just makes it a lot easier. Okay, what's up next? What's up next is, um, I don't really, although it is free, I don't really want to show the chart. Um, and I don't have, I don't think, no, I didn't print out the picture. So I'll just go like this. I have been resisting this mystery sampler. I finally caved. Um, my EGA chapter, the tip of Texas EGA, um, Birders Guild of America, they, um, at least some of them were, <clears throat> were as, a, our, uh, as a project, year-long project, folks started either the 2020 Linen and Threads Mystery Sampler, one of their past ones, or um, I think some folks were finishing up um, seminar pieces and stuff like that. And I was just going to get out, um, I have several samplers that I started that I've never finished. Um, <laughs> And um, so I was gonna work on one of those. Has that happened? No, I've been working on all these new things that keep coming up, um, these new samplers from Hands Across the Sea and things like that. So um, I hadn't even gotten out, well, I'd gotten some out, but I hadn't really worked on it. Had not worked, not really, had really, really not worked on it. And I keep seeing beautiful pictures of, of this sampler. It's Quaker inspired, which you can't, you might be able to tell um, from the little bit that um, I did. So, of course, June comes out tomorrow. And a new one is released from their website, Linens and Threads website, every the first of every month. So I'm way behind. But uh, last Sunday, or Sampler Sunday, those are the like pretty much Christmas on the 25th and Sampler Sunday sometimes are pretty much the only like things that I do that are that I, like I'm copying other people, but anyway. Um, so I, I started on this. This is 40 count on um, its, uh, the color is Wisteria. It's from Lakeside Linen. Um, it was a purchase from my local needlework store, Judy Stitchery Neck. I was looking, actually I was looking for something to put under the sea on. And um, Judy sent me this, got, well actually, she took a picture with a DMC and I'm like, oh yeah, let's try that. And it, it was just the wrong shade once I got it. But I was like, but it's really pretty. I'll find something to do with it. I'm keeping it. Um, so um, I finally decided to start the sampler. I, I tried out a couple of different threads. I was really thinking about a variegated um, <clears throat> rather than monochrome, but I didn't have anything <laughs> in my stash that was the right size for this linen. Um, and um, I didn't want to wait because I actually asked Judy you know, like hey what do you think about this and she didn't have the color I wanted in the shop and so I just kind of looked through my stash a little more and so I'm actually doing this in DMC 310 or sorry 311 I'm looking at it and I'm saying a 310 when it clearly says 311 maybe I haven't gotten enough sleep yet um, I'm severely sleep deprived but I did get good sleep last night. Okay, um, as some of my friends know, most of my friends know, my stitching friends know, um, I've been working on these um, Bent Creek Ubers. They're on 18 count. Okay, so this was before I, I knew about Strong Cheaters and um, I, I do have a nice Dublin lamp um, with magnification and and LED lights but you know sometimes you need to be somewhere where or you just don't feel like getting out your big magnifier and so 18 count linen was like my go-to for the longest time until I got better cheaters um, so I've uh, finished the shamrock one and um, in April I finished um, if you see my Instagram speed you'll see I, I finished their uber um, Easter or uber egg I can't remember what it's called um, I finished stitching them I'm going to make wall hangings out of them but um, I only have a small fabric stash here and I don't feel comfortable going into the quilt shop yet even though our closest quilt shops are open um, 
So I'm still trying to decide if I want to go with the fabrics that I have here. And then I have limited time for crafts and I spend most of it on stitching. So I've been working on this guy. I actually started this one as soon as I finished the, the Uber egg. I just put in a little bit so I could tell, I get an estimate of how much of the over dye. So the blue and these reds um, and some of the other colors are over dyes. And uh, because they're, the yardage is less than like a DMC Pro Cotton, and I'm, I'm using Pro Cottons, um, I wasn't sure I would have enough and I wanted to get it all at one time so that the dye lots weren't too off. So, um, so I just put in a little bit of this blue so I could get an idea of how many stitches I was getting from a length. And then um, I, just before everything locked down, fortunately, I, I went to Judy's and got what I needed. So actually, I guess I must have finished the egg back in early March. Pro yeah, while we were on spring break. I remember that now. So, um, so uh, for Memorial Day weekend... I picked this guy back up and I stitched this. So I had just had a like a little bit of the blue up here done and the eagle. Um, and I actually had put the eagle in the wrong, like the wrong row. So I um, had to take it out and restitch it. And then um, when did I finish this? I finished this the other night, the blue. So, um, so I'll probably, I'll be stitching on this off and on, like maybe if I'm really tired um, and my eyes just don't want to focus on the finer linen. And then, um, it's not a new start, but I did, um, I think I mentioned a little while ago that I had received Ann Roberts. I ordered it like right before everything got locked down. So I had to wait a while for this gal. So I got the pattern and the linen from Sassy Jacks, um, Judy was closed at the time, and I was, um, I don't even remember where I saw this. Um, I saw it somewhere. Might might have been on Sassy Jack's video or somewhere else. I don't remember where I saw it. I saw it, and I was like, oh, I like that. It might have been Nicole's needlework. I want to stitch everything Nicole stitches. Her stuff is so beautiful. Anyway, uh, so check out Nicole's needlework. So, um, so I kitted this, right? So I already have the, the linen. And this is 36 count Weeks Dye Work Parchment, it's Weigert Base from Sassy Jacks. This is the one that they, they picked out. Um, I think straw was what was called for, but they thought this dye lot of parchment worked better. But instead of using any of the called for threads, because again, <clears throat> I didn't want to go to the expense of um, getting the... the, um, excuse me, the silks. And I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't think I really want to use DMC on this one. So I pulled all the DMCs that I had and, um, and went through my collection of, um, Gentle Arts and Weeks Dye Works over dyes. And, um, this is what I chose. There was one I couldn't find a match for. And that was, um, DMC 3072. So if anybody knows a good over dye for 3072, let me know. Um, I, I'm thinking about, I have this old needles necessities gray. I'm thinking I might use that, but it's not quite right. And then um, I'm not going to sub for th 310. Um, and then I can't remember why this is here. Maybe because I didn't have the exact for, exact call for DMC. This was the closest I had, so I was waiting to see when I could get into Judy's and maybe find a better match. But so that's that's what I'm thinking about for this one. That's not those colors aren't quite right. It's um the parchment is more golden than it's showing up in at least on my screen. But um, I'm not sure when I'm going to start this. I really want to finish Mary Eliza first. Um, but then there's another little gem that I kind of want to start. 
as soon as I finish Mary Eliza. Um, so this might get started soon. I don't know. Um, it's really beautiful. And then, of, of course, I had to um, ask Judy to get Jane Fittis for me, the new, the new um, Hands Across the Sea, one of the new ones that there's going to be a stitch along for. I'm really horrible at stitch alongs, but I'm thinking I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, so that's pretty much what I've been working on. Um, and uh, since today's the last day of Mermania, um, I probably should have arranged this as a, this is all that I did during Mermania, but did I do that? No, but that's okay. Um, uh, maybe next week I'll just have a little recap. And um, cause I probably won't have much time for stitching this week. It's the first week of summer session, summer session one. Um, and I already have a bunch of meetings stacked up. So uh, let's see, what else was I gonna say there? Oh. Okay, so now I'm ready to talk about some of my purchases and they've mostly been online PDF downloads. Now first, I have a confession to make. In my last video, as I said, I was not really ready and I was very sleep deprived and I left out two of the of my recent purchases that were PDF downloads. And I I'm like afterwards I was I was kicking myself because I love both of these and um anyway so there's Bendy Stitchies we're all mad here I just love the colors and it's uh, obviously it's it's called Alice's Mad Plant so it's obviously an Alice in Wonderland themed thing but it's so cute and I love the colors anyway so I'm sorry I'm sorry Michelle I, for I can't believe I forgot this love it and then another Lindy Stitches, the Mary Mary Needleworker. Um, uh, those of you that have seen this pattern know that there's also a night version. Um, and I really like both of them. And somebody's actually stitching one that's half and half. I don't want to do that, but at some point I might end up stitching both versions. I think I'm going to go with it. I'm, I'm leaning towards the day version, but um, who knows? Who knows what I'll do. Um, or when I'll have time to stitch on these. Um, so those are actually from a little while ago that I just, um, I can't believe I forgot them. But anyway, um, and then um, I kind of got into some patriotic themed stuff. Um, so I was stitching on my flag and decided um, uh, Luminous Fiber Arts, uh, Ms. D. Purcell had a couple, had a, uh, a new, new release, Liberty Quaker. Is that cute or what? So um, I decided to get that. And of course, while I was there, you know, uh, as many of us are wont to say, um, things can't travel alone, even, even if they're PDF downloads. So I went ahead and got um, a Bluebird Salute. I just, I love the colors. This is, this is really cute. So um, I almost started this one, but, um, I don't have most of the flosses and I, um, I'm, I'm trying to decide. I also don't have, um, exactly the, something that matches. Um, this is one of her own, um, dyes, um, snow day, I think it is. And by the time I got to the website, I, I like I said, I was really busy. By the time I got to the website, there was none left and there were no floss packs left. So, um, I'm trying to decide, I do have, um, some pewter, Picture this plus that for that 28 count, I think I'm gonna use that. So I just need to audition some colors. So I'll probably change up all the colors. I just um, haven't gotten around to it yet. It took me a good afternoon to, um, to pull all the threads and choose um, what I wanted for Ann Roberts. So um, the idea of doing that again, even though there's far fewer colors in this one, um, I just wasn't up for that yet. Um, soon. Okay. And then, um, then yesterday I went and did a curbside pickup from Judy cause she had, um, she had some stuff for me, um, some things that I ordered. And then, um, I have a little stash at Judy's that like every month I, I, 
buy a couple of things from the stash so that I don't like totally blow all my ill-gotten gains in one one thing one purchase <laughs> anyway um so I was so excited that Michelle Bendy Stitchy is being distributed by Hoffman because now it means Judy can order her for me easily and and so um when Michelle had this um new release what last month April maybe early May I forget I forget anyway um as soon as it was available via Hoffman um I asked Judy to order it for me and it came in recently and I finally got to go pick it up on Saturday so I'm excited to get this one started. Personal is political. Very apt right now. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, and then um, a couple of, I'm collecting these uh, little, what are, they, what are they called? Little Sheep Virtues. Um, I'm collecting, so this is three, number three, um, peace, and number six, simplicity. So I now have one through six. Um, Judy's holding the others for me. I'm going to stitch them all as one piece with, um, this is Little House Needleworks with uh, a piece by her daughter, Country Cottage Needleworks. Um, and I forget the, Sheeps in the Meadow, I think is the pattern. Anyway, there's, um, and there are arrangements out there, um, like on, in the, you can ask for it in the Little House Needleworks and Country Cottage group on Facebook. Um, there are folks that have um, Pat Carson's arrangement of um, of all of these little virtues and sheep's in the, sheep in the meadow um, by Country Cottage. So once I have all those, I'll get started. And then a couple of things um, that Judy was holding for me: Feliz Navidad by Blackbird Designs, as I live in South Texas. So gotta have at least not be that. I probably won't start stitching this anytime soon because I'm except for the 25th of, of the month thing I'm, I'm very I'm a very seasonal stitcher like right now I'd have a hard time working on anything say Halloween or fall um, back in April or even March when I started the flag I was like okay I'm just putting in some stitches just to see because I'm not feeling the flag right now because it's spring it's Easter it's bunnies it's not flags yet so um, that's just how I am. Um, so probably maybe late December, I mean, late November, probably not, that's still Thanksgiving. Um, but early December, I might get this out and start stitching it. So before then I'll, I'll get it kitted up. And then um, I just love these, um, this girl series from Carriage, um, Carriage House Samplings. And, um, Apparently there's a boy series also. So this is actually from like 2007. So they've been out for a while, but um, Judy had these. I've already collected the other three. Um, they're also on that autumn gold, um, vintage autumn gold um, linen. And I have enough that I can, I can do the girl series, I think, on that also. I haven't decided if I'm gonna do them all as one piece or separate pieces. Um, I haven't decided that yet. It will take me forever to do Hawk Run Hello, so I have quite a while to, to decide. And I think that's it um, for stitching stuff. Um, I did have one other thing that I wanted to show that came in the mail as a birthday gift from one of my friends and colleagues. Um, I don't think she watches this, but um, I'm not gonna say her name because I don't, I, she probably would be fine with it, but anyway, you know who you are. But she sent me these lovely, <clears throat> labels for my knitting. Let's see. You see, it says Handmade with Love by R. Deborah Obroth. And there's a little heart with um, heart shaped ball of yarn with knitting needles in it. Is that cute? I just love these. So these will be great for like when I make baby hats and other other things for folks. Um, so these were from late label weavers is where she got these. I love, love these. So thank you. 
Okay, and I think that's pretty much it. Um, I don't know how I managed to fill up 30, 40 minutes with, I mean, I don't feel like I have a lot, but I do. Anyway, um, as always, being science nidster, a scientist and a biology instructor, I feel I need to end my, my podcast, my floss tube, with a little um, PSA public service announcement. Today's public service announcement, I wanna talk a little bit more about how science works. And in particular, I just wanna um, talk about why do we need um, to do controlled experiments to know that the outcome is the right answer. So what do I mean by that? So let me give a specific example about something that's going on right now. Um, you may have heard about, you know, this drug or that drug um, may may help, like so-and-so took, I don't even remember what the drug's names are, um, took whatever drug it was and they felt better in a few days, even though they had been infected with COVID. Why isn't that good enough to know that that drug works? Well, that's not how science works. This is how science works. We need evidence from an experiment or, or observation. Sometimes our experiments are actually observations because we can't actually manipulate things. The best type of experiments are when everything is the same except the one thing you wanna test. So if it we could, it would be great if we could get clones of people and control what they did, control what they ate, control everything about them, and just change whether they got the drug or not, right? That would be perfect, but we can't do that with people, right? That, no. Number one, we don't have clones. Number two, that would be highly unethical, right? To, to experiment on people like that. So what's the best we can do with humans? We do large, as large as possible trials, because if you do a large number of people, that helps balance out the differences among them so that you can still see whatever signal, um, with kind of jargon that we use, that is that is coming from the experiment. Like how well, um, how well that drug works, right? So, and the other thing is, people vary. There's a lot of diversity in people, right? There's a lot of diversity in any organisms, and so for things like drugs, how they act may depend on some of your genes. So certain, we already know, certain uh, anti-cancer drugs work better in some people against particular types, uh, particular genotypes of, of say breast cancer than others. We already know that. Um, with COVID, you know, this is new. We don't know a lot of things. There's a lot of things we don't know. That makes it harder to control what we need to control, right? So. We want to do an experiment where we have some people get a drug and some people don't get a drug. And we, we see things like, do they recover faster? Um, are their symptoms less or more severe with the drug? Very important. What are the drug interactions? You might find a drug that is great against COVID-19, but it kills people. You wouldn't want to give that drug, right? Just saying. Um, so we want to do these as controlled as possible experiments, as large a number as possible, in order to get an idea what are side effects, how how good is the drug on a variety of people, and um, and in different situations, um, and and so because one or two people took a drug and felt better, that isn't the evidence we need because maybe they had a particularly mild case of COVID or maybe they were already getting better and by the time they took the drug, they were gonna get better in two or three or however many, however many days anyway, right? We don't know because we don't know all of the situation and we need numbers Right, we need numbers to know that a particular case just isn't fortuitous, right? It just, for what, some reason we can't figure out, 
the drug worked in this person. Or like I said, maybe they were going to get better that fast anyway. So we have to be able to compare people that get the drug and people that don't get the drug to know how well the, or even if the drug really works. Because if there's no difference between the folks that get the drug and don't get the drug or there's very little difference, then that drug isn't really working, right? So people get the drug and others get what we call a placebo. And, and in general, that's how science works. You want to change one thing. Sometimes we get a little more fancy and we, we vary other things, but we want to vary one thing between what we call our, our experimental group and our control group. And that tells us if that thing we've changed has an effect or not, right? Does that thing we've changed cause an effect or is it just a correlation? So the types of experiments where some people take a drug is, and get seem to get better, okay, maybe that's something we should look at more closely. But again, we don't know because we don't have that control group to, to compare to, would they have gotten better in that length of time or not? Anyway, I've gone longer than I intended to, um, but I just kind of wanted to put that out there to, again, I feel like part of my job as a scientist is to help people understand all the stuff they're hearing and, um, try to um, just kind of parse what's real and, and, and what's not. And, and I, hope, I hope these little PSAs are helping to do that. And I hope you enjoyed my stitching. Oh, I forgot to say, um, might have noticed, I have some new stuff back here from my last video. Um, I went ahead and put out some of my patriotic stitching things and I forgot to mention, this will be my last thing. This little postcard came with my um, my labels, so thank you for this too. I'm pretty sure this was <clears throat> this was hand colored and it is beautiful. So it's up with my stitching right now. So um, I hope you have a wonderful week. I do plan to be back next week. It's hopefully the first semester of summer session one goes well, and I'll have time to record something either Saturday or Sunday next week and. Um, as always, be kind to yourself and be kind to your neighbors. Have a wonderful week. Thanks for watching. Bye.